to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Opportunity for you to meet with him. Hallelujah. So that you don't just come and not receive. We want you to leave with something that will make a mark in your life in the name of Jesus. Welcome everyone around you. Thank you for coming. Please hug someone. Hallelujah. Jesus. Tonight's teaching is very powerful. Um, hallelujah. There are certain times in our lives when God brings messages that can alter our destinies. Every message is important. I believe it is powerful. But there are certain times when God just steps in and grants you keys and revelations that will make you so powerful and so blessed. I believe that if you take seriously what you are going to hear tonight, it will open us to new dimensions of glory in the name of Jesus. Help us tonight, dear Spirit of God. You are the only helper we have. Grant us grace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One of the greatest assets that a Christian can have in his life is not just the ability to pray. It's not just the ability to, to study God's word. It's not even just the ability to love God. But one of the greatest assets that a believer can have is the ability to interpret spiritual things. Hallelujah. The ability to relate the things that happen in the earth realm from the perspective of the heavens. The Bible says the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the times. Praise God. When in the days of Belshazzar, the Bible says that there was a handwriting that came from the realm of the spirit and wrote on the wall, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufesen. And no man, including the soothsayers and the magicians, could interpret it. Hallelujah. One of the greatest assets that we need in these days as believers is to contend for that place in the spirit where we are able to interpret the handwritings that are on the wall so that we can understand the things that the Holy Ghost is doing. We can understand the pathways in the spirit. And this is what we seek to enforce in this place. All the principles that we teach in this place all of the times of prayer and impartation is to open us to that point in the spirit where we are able to relate with spiritual things for the bible says the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit why because it takes a level of discernment in the spirit to interpret it hallelujah praise god and i was excited when the lord asked me to share what i'm about to share tonight because I believe that someone's life will never be the same in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'm teaching on a subject I titled, Activating Breakthroughs. Activating Breakthroughs. And then you put a colon. The Ministry of Destiny help us. Activating Breakthroughs. 
column, the ministry of destiny help us. The beauty of Christianity, please listen, look up. The beauty of Christianity is that every time we relate to God, either in worship, in fastings, in prayer, there is always a response from heaven. Hallelujah. A response from heaven to this earth realm. Hallelujah. And so God responds to us by releasing miracles, by releasing signs, wonders, by granting us the ability to partake of his success. Hallelujah. Christianity is very, will be very unfair on the part of God if the believers do not have an opportunity to participate in the love and the honor and the glory that God carries. I love the song that the worship team just rendered. That not only does God want to use us, but he wants us to have the opportunity to partake of everything that he has. It establishes our oneness and his desire to bless us. Hallelujah. And so the subject of breakthrough has been something on my mind. I've seen churches and ministries passionate about God, passionate about the things of God. I've seen ministries that fast, that pray, call upon the name of God. They walk in holiness and righteousness. But not many of their congregations ever truly experience breakthroughs. Hallelujah. The sick people come, they go back sick. The oppressed people come, they go back oppressed. The only notable thing that happens in that environment is that their souls being saved. And while that is wonderful and great, what about families that are in bondages? What about destinies that have been tied down? What about people who need to step into the blessings of God? Hallelujah. And eventually, the congregations begin to ask questions and say, is, is God not interested in our personal well-being? Is he just interested in using us for his glory? Is he just interested in watching us pray and fast, you know, interceding for souls and so on and so forth? Is he just interested in seeing us serve him? What do we have? What package has he designed? Is he insensitive to our needs? Is he unaware of the challenges that our families have? Hallelujah. Is he aware that there are doors that have been closed over families and destinies? If yes, is he interested in doing anything about it? Hallelujah. And it's important that as we minister to God's people, we open them up to everything that can be obtained in God. By God's grace, we teach you prayer. We teach you how to walk in the world. We teach you how to live in obedience to God. But we must also expose you to the dimensions of God that can release breakthroughs in your life. Hallelujah. That's why we take testimonies every week. As a symbol of what God is doing in the lives of his people. Because you see, when you receive personal results in your life, you are motivated to follow God. That may not be your primary reason, but it can motivate you. Is that true? When when you receive phone calls like the gentleman who just shared where's the gentleman that shared about his mom you can imagine now he comes for the meeting and then while he's sitting under the ad atmosphere of god's presence his mom gets healed somewhere hallelujah do you believe this guy has been motivated to press more into god believers are motivated if you see he said when john the baptist sent that they should ask jesus christ if he was the messiah he didn't answer the disciples he just turned and began to heal the sick began to do miraculous things and then when he was done he told john he told the disciples say go and tell john what you have seen in other words the kingdom of god should find visible expression the kingdom of god represents the entirety of god's sovereignty his power if God is as powerful 
as we preach, if God is as great, if he's as loving and caring as we teach, then don't you think that at a point in your life, your life should experience some testimonies that can encourage you, that you can have a message for yourself and say, I have seen the hand of God in my life. I have seen the intervention of God. I've seen breakthroughs in my families. And I told God something. I said, Lord, I never want to be part of a ministry that does not have results. Hallelujah. I don't want to just come and deceive God's people. And it's not enough just to fall down and stand up. If you're falling down, it's not producing results. You will get angry one day. Hallelujah. But thank God we have a God that is alive and is doing wonders in our midst. Hallelujah. And so I'm sharing on activating breakthroughs. In my personal life and in my journey in the spirit, there are four things that characterize seasons of breakthrough in a man's life. Please take this teaching very seriously. Four things. Every time a man is about to step into prophetic, defining moments, moments of breakthrough, I'm not just talking of one testimony here. Realms of breakthrough where God is about to step into a life and truly do something notable. There are four things that happen. When you approach that season of your life, I'm teaching you this so that you can know and relate with these seasons when they come. Hallelujah. Again, one of the things I learned watching the film Lord of the Rings is... The fact that they were warriors from different kingdoms. And what made these people warriors was not just their ability to fight, but their ability to understand seasons. Hallelujah. When other men just stumbled into seasons, those men could look and discern. I remember one of them looking and seeing a red cloud and he said blood had been shed in the night. The ability to look when other people are just looking you are standing from a plane in the spirit and you are saying this has happened because something is happening the wise men hallelujah the wise men saw a star and while other people were saying ah, ah why is the earth shining like this they understood that this is a message in the realm of the spirit that they ought to respond to hallelujah so while the star was supposed to lead men to where Jesus was. Some other people just looked and they were moving around and they were happy. Yet others were taking advantage of the seasons. So I don't just want you to interpret the happenings around life from an earth realm. Hallelujah. I want you to be able to see prophetic things. That when you see handwritings on the wall, you don't just pass it. Many people have missed out on seasons of breakthrough. Because they have not been taught to discern moments of breakthrough in their life. Many families would have risen from where they are, from where they are into the prophetic destiny that God has for them. But because they do not know how to understand spiritual things. So follow me tonight. Four things. Number one, when a major season of breakthrough is about to open up in your life, the first thing that happens is that there is an unusual impartation of the spirit of prayer. An unusual impartation of the spirit of prayer. Whenever you begin to sense an irresistible urge to pray an irresistible urge to pray not just to pray with in a group know that these are prophetic signposts these are languages in the spirit that are pointing to you that you are about to step into a major season of breakthrough and i'll explain to you why these things happen spirit of prayer how many of you have sat down and suddenly you cannot tell it's not like you are not prayerful but maybe over a period of three or four days or one week you cannot rest you are praying every time you are partnering with what is happening in the realm of the spirit you may not even know but because you have yielded yourself to the holy spirit the holy spirit must not always speak to you his ultimate um desire 
is to lead you not just to speak to you that your body comes to a point where even without speaking to you you can permit him to carry out what the bible says the holy ghost drove jesus to the wilderness he didn't say jesus let's go jesus's body was so yielded to the holy ghost that he just found himself moving at the impulse of the holy spirit and the bible says the wind bloweth where it listeth you cannot tell where it's coming or where it's going such is one who is led of the spirit so every time you are about to step into prophetic seasons of breakthrough you know what a breakthrough is a breakthrough is when the barrier that is limiting you from stepping into the next level of your life is about to be lifted or is lifted that's a breakthrough when there is a stronghold when there is a mountain when there is a limitation when there is a resistance that would not allow you to push through to that next level of life in destiny by whatever spiritual agency when that barrier is lifted we call it a breakthrough so number one what the spirit of prayer suddenly you see someone who may not even pray for an hour but you find out that there is grace to pray grace to pray while you're praying it's like there's an endless supply while you're praying you can sense in the spirit that things are happening you cannot tell what it is that is happening but you know that the more you press your prayer is doing something and is having an effect in your spirit directly sometimes you begin to pray and you get to a point in your spirit where you can even start laughing i'm not talking of laughing in the spirit joy that you cannot explain because a chord is being hit in the spirit but many people when they get to that point because they do not know the significance of that dimension of prayer they do not partner with the angels to bring in complete breakthroughs and they go back and miss out on cycles and seasons of breakthrough that would have come. Are you getting blessed? Number two. When you are about to enter a prophetic season of breakthrough in your life. The second thing that happens is an unusual grace to give. An unusual grace to give. An unusual grace. When you are about to step into those prophetic seasons suddenly. You lose value of everything around you. You just know that I can give anything and it won't matter again. When that begins to happen to you, take note. Have you gotten to a point where you sit down and just look at your clothes and you can carry about 20 or 30% of them and just say, I'm going to sew it. And I tell you, there is a dissociation between you and those things is because you are about to step into a new level. You see how many of you have missed out on such seasons because you did not know how to take advantage. If you could take advantage of it, you would have stepped into major seasons of breakthroughs. This that I'm teaching you is born out of the word of God and practical experiences. Hallelujah. There are many of you who can just be walking and the next thing God tells you, go for a retreat quick. You are supposed to travel. God just summons you and says, go for a retreat. The moment that happens, make sure nothing is too important to make you cancel that appointment. Hallelujah. Because that's not just your normal prayer for spiritual growth. It is a call to contend with the things in the heavens so that you will step into a prophetic season in your life. So number one, the spirit of prayer. An unusual urge to pray, to travel in the spirit. You just find yourself blessing the Lord. Manda kratosa talabakaya. You are sleeping in the night and God wakes you. That sleep cannot come back again. And you are just praying in the spirit. That's a sign that a door is about to open for you in the spirit. But many of you wake up. And when you see your colleague sleeping. Just say Kai. Let me just. 15 minutes exactly. By the grace of God, I won't add 15 minutes. You even put one leg down on your bed so that you can wake up. And you wake up and see that it's 6 o'clock. And you see, the Holy Spirit does not struggle with the human spirit. Are you listening to me? Because it's not a demon. The moment he begins to communicate to you, it's a language in the spirit. 
He's telling you, watch this. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Can you stand? So that you will step into this major season. Hallelujah. Number two, an unusual urge to give. Not just, I'm not just talking of giving money alone. But suddenly you get to the point where nothing that you have is like a string that connects the things that you have and you is suddenly broken away from your life. And you know at that point, if God asks you to empty your bank account or if God asks you to give anything, you can lose it. Including your family members. It's not like you don't love them. I'm just giving you languages in the spirit. You know that there's nothing, nothing. And you find out that you know that by the kind of songs you sing in your place of prayer. You begin to sing songs of surrender and commitment. You don't even know why you are singing those songs. Have they ever raised a song for you and you know this is not the song that communicates what God is saying. It's not bad, but mm -mm, this is not the song. Hallelujah. When you step in church and they just sing a song, we can sing a powerful song like um more of you more of you it's nice but it doesn't strike a chord in your spirit and even you you think you are backsliding no no you just sit down you are not you are not connecting you are even feeling guilty about it you are wondering why you are not connecting hallelujah then suddenly they raise another song i lay it all down again and you start crying you don't even know what is happening it's a reaction to a season that your spirit is relating with the moment they begin to sing that so anything that has to do with laying it down forgetting about it you know your spirit picks it up and that's the song you're just singing may not make sense to you but you are getting into defining moments that will open up prophetic seasons of breakthrough are you getting blessed tonight number three when you are about to step into major seasons of breakthrough i mean major seasons number three there will be an unusual confrontation from the kingdom of darkness suddenly you notice that it's as if all hell is breaking loose over you as if the Satan, I mean, the devil just told all the demons, said, Look, just leave everybody, chase Wumi, find Wumi anywhere you see her, look for her. Hallelujah! Have you seen people like that? So it looks like the more they are praying for you, the issue is getting worse. Hold on, that's the time to begin to see from the realm of the spirit. Because many people are taught to judge these things. Do you know why? You see, Satan does not know your future. But the moment a prophetic word is uttered, what happens? There is an unusual manifestation of angelic activities. Suddenly, it sends a signal in the realm of the spirit. What? Because they know that Satan knows. He was an angel before, I hope you know. So he knows that every time there is an unusual dispatch of angels, something is about to be translated from the realm of the spirit into this realm. Hallelujah. And suddenly, confrontations from the power of darkness, they begin to bring arrows of discouragement, impatience, procrastination, offense. Suddenly you find out that a major season is about to enter your family and your father and mother are quarreling for trivial issues. Why did you bring the tea in this green cup? Is this the cup I use every day? And you are wondering, you are like, Daddy, what is this whole thing? If you learn to judge from the spirit, you see why you start by unusual ability to pray? Because there will be contentions. Are you getting blessed tonight? Suddenly, you are just getting offended with people for reasons they cannot tell. Someone looks at you and says, beautiful hair. He says, hey, mock me. Ah, even you, you are finding what is wrong. People say you are being so edgy. You are being offensive. What is wrong? Say, even me, I don't know what is happening. But God is telling you, go and pray. Because you are stepping into prophetic moments. Are you listening to me? The powers of darkness are finding access points that they can step into your life. And on legal grounds, hinder what God wants to do. 
are you seeing why praise is a tool for victory you see why god will give you are you seeing that this is why sometimes when breakthroughs are about to come god will distract you with praise so that before you realize the breakthrough can come so you lock yourself and you are just dancing in it you don't even know why you are dancing because with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation many people have lost it at this point suddenly you find out that everybody is just offending you you are about to go and pray you are sensing in your spirit and somebody comes and says let me tell you something Selina, um, I wouldn't have told you, but let me tell you. Do you know what your sister said? And you are like, what again? These are dangerous seeds that, that will stop you from entering prophetic moments of your life. Hallelujah. Or you are about to go and pray and then a call comes. And your mother says, do you know what happened? There was an accident. Ah -ah. In your dreams, you are seeing your family members rejoicing. You haven't seen them cutting cake. In the physical, you are hearing that one car has. At such times, many people just dampen their spirit. The Bible says, for as long as the hands of Moses kept it, it was up. What happened? There was victory. When Aaron and her were tired and they began to bring the hand, what happened? How can a man's hand control the victory that is happening in a war front? Many people do not understand spiritual pathways. And I'm telling you, the more you have this knowledge, the more you will reign in life. Unusual confrontations. In fact, for some of you, they may even be direct confrontations. You're just walking and for the first time you hear a voice saying you will die. You will die. And you carry that mindset. It's a seed that the devil wants to sow into your life. That's the day you got up and found out that your shirts that they eye on your roommate wore and say, hey, God, let me kill somebody today. Where is she? Prophetic moments. Notice that the moment that season is aborted, all those disturbances just minimize and you can live your normal life. Are you, are you listening to me? Prophetic seasons. And then number four. Number four is suddenly you will begin to attract certain people called destiny helpers destiny help us there will be prophetic unusual encounters please let me have two people my god open our eyes tonight teach us mysteries in the spirit come you stand up here kenny sam just stay down hallelujah watch this this is a level look up everybody this is a level is that correct this gentleman wants to step into this level and he has been walking now he has gotten to this prophetic shift hallelujah while he's praying and fasting this is what happens can i have a third person anybody thank you pastor Femi. suddenly god you just be walking sam yes just be coming and God comes and causes you to intercept at the exact time with certain people he calls destiny helpers. Their job, hold his hands, is to help you and guide you to step up and they will leave. Sam, you climb, climb up, Femi, go back. That's their job. Sometimes they will come into your life just once and you may never see them again. Follow me tonight. God bless you, sirs. Four things happen to believers. This is the structure of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. When Jesus was going to go and bring a major breakthrough to a man who was possessed of devils and to go and preach in Gadara, what happened? They were in the boat, in, the, in, the, in their boat. Is that correct? Suddenly, the sea started getting boisterous. Question. 
was that the first time they were going by sea i hope you realize that the sea was not just doisterous it was the demons the legions of devils that were in the man at gadara that were reacting attempting to stop them from coming hallelujah notice did you notice that the disciples started getting angry at jesus christ they got offended they said master carest thou not that we perish when jesus woke up he knew that he needed to calm them down and he said shalom what happened the bible tells us that that madman used to stay in caves who told him jesus was coming because the moment jesus stepped into gadara he was there waiting he was the first person he met hallelujah did you hear the lady that came to share the testimony about her father that ever, how can a man be having accidents every month when i don't watch so much of football but when you are in a serious match i don't mean friendlies just to shake yourself and change jerseys real match that can change the destiny of a nation hallelujah when you are about to score what happens the people they tell them do everything quacking killing just do everything stop this guy from school you find out that the hostility increases because at that point a single goal can make the difference are you understanding this many people and many families have missed out on cycles it's like a spiritual cycle when you miss it it will come back but it won't come back immediately so your job is to stand and discern when you see that cloud moving you begin to walk with the holy ghost to make preparations for the things that god wants to release hallelujah i'll not talk about the first three i'll talk very briefly about the last one destiny helpers who are these men who are these strange beings that seem to come to 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 stand by people in the path of destiny please write destiny help us are men and women that we find on our road to breakthroughs our road to destiny who provide help for the next level of our lives our miracles and our destiny there are men that we meet on our path to destiny. I'm going to be showing you from God's word. And you'll see how consistent this is. Say in the name of Jesus. I activate breakthroughs in my life. The Bible says. In the book of Genesis 41. If you turn there the story of Joseph. Look up please. Joseph had a great destiny. Is that correct? He had a dream and he told his brothers. He said, brothers, I saw you people bowing to me. The brothers said, you will see, we'll kill you before that will happen. And they sold him. Is that correct? Do you realize, let me show you all the people that played a role in that journey. The Bible says it was at the time he entered the well that certain Egyptians were passing. Why did they not pass before? or after forget the fact that they bought him but they were the vehicles that transported him he didn't pay transport fare they transported him into where potiphar's house do you know that egypt was his geographical location of breakthrough are you listening to me so how was he going to go there his father would never allow him to go to egypt i hope you know and so certain Egyptians in the name of buying him while they were carrying him he did not know that prophetically there were angels and activities that were pushing him to the place of destiny hold on when he gets to Egypt the Bible says that he went into the prison now watch this every time you are about to take a journey into destiny before you start god will show you something that you will hold in that journey for moses it is a rod for joseph it is a dream god will say note it one day we'll make reference with you will never start your journey 
without knowing what he gave you. Many of us have thrown it. That jar is, is, is no good because it does not look. For Moses, he said, you hold this rod. A day will come. When he got to that point in the Red Sea, he said, remember the rod. Now Moses, stretch that rod. A time has come for the ministry of that rod to come in. Hallelujah. For Joseph, he had nothing but a simple dream. A simple dream. Are you following me tonight? He had a simple dream. And while these guys were taking, did he like it? But he was going to the geography of his breakthrough. When he got there, what happened? And this is the sign. Because while he was going, the Bible says God was with him. This is how you know God is with you. Because even in the midst of these things, you see favor. The favor and the grace of God. And the Bible says he went into prison. What happened? He was faithful. And Potiphar made him the head of everything except his wife. Watch this. Then comes this dangerous woman who sees this handsome Egyptian. Hallelujah. And on account of his work with God and his loyalty to his master, what happened? The Bible says he ran and he left his clothes there. Do you know if Joseph had slept with her, he would have just been happy and gone back to the prison in the evening and he would have remained there. Who knows that he slept with her? But he would have remained in the prison there. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, Joseph was in the prison and God made it in such a way that it was when Joseph was coming to the prison that the wine presser and the baker for some reasons, they annoyed the king. The king said, go and lock them. The king, let's explain. They go and lock them. And while they lock them there, then Joseph steps in. Watch this. He looks at them. And Joseph is worried about their state. They woke up in the morning and the Bible says their countenance was very bad. Hallelujah. And the wine presser said, I have a dream. Why did God create a need that only the gift in Joseph could solve? Are you following me now? God knew that he had given Joseph grace for dreams. Then he created that need. And the one presser got up. Please listen. He said, I had a dream. I saw this and that and that. And this and that happened. And Joseph told him, he said, wow. In three days... The king is going to call you back and you'll be reinstated to your position. The guy laughed. He said, please, when you go, don't forget me. The other guy said, ah, me too, I have my own. No. He said, what is wrong? He said, there were three baskets on my head and vultures came and ate everything. Joseph said, well, in three days, they'll finally finish up your case. They'll bring you out and they'll go and hang you and the birds of the air will eat up your flesh. Watch this. Joseph did not know that those two people, they did not have gift, but they had access to the king that could bring Joseph. Are you seeing? Destiny helpers may not be gifted people, but they have access. You have the gift, but you don't have access to the king. They have access to the king, but they may not have the gifts. Hallelujah. It came to pass like that. And after the wine presser was reinstated, the Bible says he forgot Joseph. But watch this. When it was time for Joseph to step into the place of destiny, what happened? God now, since the wine, the wine presser forgot him, I'm sure Joseph would have been disappointed. You now see that? He would have been angry and said, oh, two years. This guy kept me in this captivity and I helped him. But something happened. The Bible says that... God gave the king a dream. You see it now? When God is ready to lift you, those who matter, he will give them a problem they cannot solve and shut every door until your gift answers to it. That's how God lifts a man. Please listen, I'm teaching you a powerful mystery. Because every king, they had sorcerers and soothsayers. This is Egypt we are talking about. Egypt had thousands of gods they could consult. But that day God shut the heavens. The magicians did everything. The heavens would not open. And the king said, you better answer my dream. You better find the solution. 
kings were cruel people those days they could wipe out a whole land because they were angry suddenly the magicians consulted and said what is happening they said we don't know and then the wine presser said something watch this 41 verse 9 41 verse 9 are you there then spoke the chief butler unto Pharaoh saying I do remember my faults this day so after two years the man remembered Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in prison in the captain of the guard's house both me and the chief baker listen and we dreamed a dream in one night. I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dreams. Listen. And there was there with us a young man. An Hebrew. Servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him. Now hold on. Do you know. While all of this was happening. Joseph did not know. That he was at the edge. Are you listening to me? If he had missed a defining moment. He would have remained in that prison. Sometimes. Could it be that you are just a night away to a major breakthrough in your life? Have you heard that song? I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it. Powerful song. Many believers have gotten to the edge and then Satan comes into something that aborts the whole journey. Thirteen, and it came to pass as he interpreted to us. So it was. Now listen. If Joseph had his way. Listen. If Joseph had his way. And he ever met Pharaoh once. Do you know Pharaoh will be so impressed with Joseph. That you say why are you in the prison in the first place. But sometimes. Do you, see the irony of life. You can see a gifted person. Who graduated and he's so good. And here is somebody. Who is a blessed man. Who needs that gift. But the, that contact are you listening to me there are many of our loved ones that are gifted i heard the story of a gentleman who fan caught his some of his fingers and then suddenly it was like an anointing came upon him and that guy could draw you know um, fine art students he could do what they call it um, abstract on the wall praise god and then this guy had been praying to god and said lord give my family a major breakthrough because his mother told him, I didn't go to school. Your hands are cut, but do something. Go and learn something. And this guy was praying, watch this. When that was happening, the Holy Ghost began to give him ideas. He said, begin to do your abstract on plenty papers and store them. Every time you see this guy drawing, people were saying, your colleagues are going out to look for a job. He said, but God told me this. Watch this. Suddenly, one day, he went to visit his friend. Huh? when he went to visit his friend his friend was talking with someone and it so happened that they just opened the branch this is a true story they opened the branch of a bank you know banks do abstract on their wall and they had been looking for someone the person who used to do it for the bank he did something nasty and the bank got angry with him and suddenly they just said ah but don't you draw the guy came there with his file he was ready they said meet at so 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 place and he went do you know that, that day, he got a contract of over 4 million naira. Overnight. Why? Hold on. It wasn't just because the people that connected him did not even know the gravity of what they were doing. Do you realize that your destiny helpers do not know their destiny helpers? God conceals it so that they will not corrupt what he's trying to do through them. The destiny helpers themselves never know their destiny helpers until the miracle happens one day when you are saying it. The wine presser, if the wine presser knew that he was sitting close to someone who would be the prime minister of, of Egypt, you think he would treat him the way he treated him? Hallelujah. And then, let me rush. They call Joseph. I like, I like, I like the way. Let's look at um, verse 14. 14. Are you there? 41 verse 14. And Pharaoh sent, listen. 
Pharaoh sent at the recommendation of who? A destiny helper, the wine presser. The wine presser said, I testified that there was a time I needed help. Hallelujah. And a Hebrew guy called Joseph, by this time, do you know what it means to stay two years in the prison without shaving? Without, you don't have the luxury of shaving and this. You were looking like a, a native doctor. And the Bible says, I'll show you from scripture. Verse 14. And Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him hastily out of where? The dungeon. It's only your destiny partners that can connect you to come out of some dungeons. You may be gifted, but you will remain in some dungeons. Until some destiny partners come. Do you know that many of our family members, they are praying in tongues and they are gifted. Let me announce to everybody here, there is something you have that is in desperate demand. The distance between you and your place of honor is a destiny help. If you never find these destiny helpers, you can die a failure in life. I've seen this happen so many times. Hallelujah. When we were about to get the venue for this place, when God began to speak to us about Koinonia, we were praying. You know how difficult it is to get venue. Hallelujah. We were even looking for a place to pay for. And I began to pray. I began to pray. And I had a number of options. And when I was praying, the Lord showed me, said, you will use CGC. I really didn't know. I administered only once or twice in the ministry. I said, Lord, how can you use people's auditorium? And then you start. And God said, you hold on. But he had taught me the ministry of destiny helpers. So I knew better. Are you following me now? And I knew which tool to engage. Not random, foolish prayer, pointless arrow. You have AK-47, you're just shooting everywhere. You need to direct with target. That's what many believers are doing. We just pray but we do not know. The Bible says through wise counsel make war. You can, you can minimize wasting bullets. Many people just pray everywhere and say break to wherever you are. Let him meet you. Calm down. You can walk with wisdom and walk circumspectly. I began to pray because I knew that all I needed was a destiny. Do you know it does not take more than 24 hours for God to change a man's story? God just needs to bring a man. Your father has been praying. He's a good architect. And there are people begging. Begging. They want to build estates. They are begging. Can there be something that will happen in the realm of the spirit? See... There's no time I would have given you stories of how people's lives have changed overnight. I hope you believe what I'm teaching tonight. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Joseph the Bible says and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came to Pharaoh and Pharaoh said unto Joseph I have dreamed a dream and there is none that can interpret it and I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it and Joseph answered Pharaoh and said it is not in me God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace hallelujah and then he interprets the dream. Verse 32. It's amazing when your gift begins to speak in the place where it is honored. Do you know something? Listen. Your gift will never speak in a place they don't value and honor it. Hallelujah. That's why you can see someone who is a worshiper. He goes somewhere to minister. It's not the place of his honor. They don't even honor it. But he can step into another place. Your gift will always create an effect where it was designed to be honored always hallelujah 32 and for that the dream was doubled unto pharaoh twice it is because the thing is established by god and god will shortly bring it to pass look at the ease at which joseph was interpreting this dream and the magicians were all watching god orchestrated an event where all the all the senate members of egypt were gathered and they were listening see listen whenever 
God begins to prepare a table before you. Learn to discern from the spirit. Because he will be taking you to a place you never dreamt of. He'll lead me and guide me to the city up above. He'll lead me and guide me to my place of destiny. I know he leads me and he guides me to the city up above. Lord, you lead me and guide me to my place of destiny. Hallelujah. 33. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh seek out a man. He didn't know he was talking about himself. Desperate and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up grain under the hand of Pharaoh and let him keep food for the cities. Just jump verse 39. This is where a man's breakthrough comes. After 12 years of misery, being transported into his destiny by people he did not like, facing situations he did not know were orchestrating themselves for his lift in 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown ye all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Immediately, without prayer, without fasting, help me read verse 41 to read. And thou shalt be over my house. No interview. No meeting with any council member. Kings did not make stupid decisions. They met with their wise men. But the king announced he vetoed it. Thou shalt be over my house. And according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Five minutes ago, a prisoner. Five minutes later, the prime minister. My God, how can you explain this? The people who shaved him said so we were shaving the prime minister. The people who dressed him. And imagine Pharaoh who took him to the prison. I mean Potiphar. Now he had become Lord. Imagine what Potiphar's house wife would do hear me friends god is in the business of changing the lives and the stories of men and of families it does not cost him so much all you need is the man that requires what god has given you he leads me and guides me to the place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city up above. Your mother has a large poultry farm. There is a major hotel that is being constructed. One manifestation of destiny helpers at a recommendation. They can begin to say, Madam, begin to supply this hotel for as long as the hotel lives. See, friends, every man I know who has been blessed in any area of life got to a point in his life where he was led by destiny helpers to enter fearful mind blowing and irrecoverable parts of destiny let's look at Jesus we call him the king of kings we call him the lord of lords but let's see all the people that played different parts in the life of Jesus did you know the Bible says, I don't know if I should read it. All right, let's read it. Luke 2. Let's hurry up. Because we are going to do some prayer this night. Hallelujah. Prayer this night. I shared it with the leaders on Sunday. God began to speak to me that a breakthrough anointing is coming upon the house in a very, very, very significant way. And we prayed in that light. Luke 2. Verse 25. Luke 2 verse 25. This is the story of Jesus. Are you there? And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was a righteous and devoted man 
waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord Jesus. Hold on. Look up. This guy called Simeon. Hallelujah. The Bible says God told him he would not see death. His job was to wait until he prophesies into the life of Jesus before he would die. Are you seeing? We don't hear the names of all these people in scripture. But tonight I want to show you people who took the destiny of Jesus and passed the button for him to become our savior. Hallelujah. And then he prayed and prophesied. Let's look at verse 36. So one destiny helper we see in the life of Jesus. Simeon. Number 2. 36 now. And there was one Anna. Listen to how the Bible describes her. What does he call her? One Anna. Hold on. He said one Anna. And one Anna. There was one Anna. Hold on. But without that one Anna, there will be no Jesus. There will be no redemption of mankind. There was one Anna, a prophetess. The daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. He said, and she was of a great age and had lived with, with a husband seven years from her virginity. Seven years and the man died. So what was she doing with the remaining part of her life? Let's read on. And she was a widow about four score and four, 84 years. So for all that remaining time, 84 years, the Bible says, who departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayer night and day. And she coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for the redemption of Israel. She was the woman who was praying that Jesus be born. Are you seeing that? There was a woman behind the scene, a destiny helper, praying and fasting at age 84 that Jesus will that that what has been prophesied let me tell you if there were no people to pray they would have killed Jesus because the people would not be sensitive to angelic activities they would have killed him and there would not be redemption for mankind destiny help us we don't honor them the Bible never talks about Simeon again the Bible never talks about Anna again are you following me please destiny help us at the death of Jesus the Bible says listen that when Jesus had carried the cross, he had bled so much and the Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. He carried the cross to the point that this was him and the place that would bring redemption for mankind. But there was no more strength and what happened? He fell. At the point where he was falling, one black man meandered that road called Simon of Cyrene. Are you following me now? And they said, Simon, come. They didn't ask him whether he had eaten or not. They didn't ask him where he was going. They just said, Mr. Man, pick up this cross. What happened? A destiny helper. He carried the cross. Cruel men. No devil can resist your destiny helpers. If you, These were men who would not allow Jesus to drink water. But they allowed a man to carry his cross for him. And Simon helped Jesus. And so Jesus could regain some strength. The Bible says that when Jesus died, there was another strange rich man called Joseph of Arimathea. He had a virgin tomb because the prophets had, been, had prophesied that none of his bones would be broken and that he would be buried in a tomb that is virgin. So God had led one man to buy a grave. How can a man buy a tomb and keep it for his own death? He didn't even know why he bought it. Remember when Jesus wanted to come in the triumphant entry. The Bible says a man had tied a coat. He didn't tell us the man. He said go and tell the man the master had need. At once he released the coat. Are you seeing all the people that played parts? When you watch your Jesus of Nazareth. They silence those people. And so you don't even know. You just see Jesus. But without these people in his life. The Bible talked about the wise men once. They didn't tell us anything about them again. It talked about the shepherds. They didn't tell us anything about them again. Now Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible says Joseph of Arimathea was an influential man. It was on account of his influence. So a rich man was required for the redemption of men. 
It was the rich man that used his influence and went and said, give me the body of this man, let me bury. If not, they would have left Jesus to hang on the cross there. Are you listening to me? Now we don't follow up these stories very well. And they took him to a virgin tomb and they laid him there. Look at all the people that played roles in the life of Jesus Christ. Moses, another man. The Bible says when they were killing Hebrew children, you remember? His mother put him in a basket. The word Moses means to come out of a basket. The mother put him in a basket. And do you know that she put a Hebrew material in the basket? and pushed him how can a mother that was a sign of desperation she said let me just push him oh god guide him suddenly the water started leading moses to a place for no reason pharaoh's daughter just said i'm not taking my bath don't they have bathrooms here i will go to the stream this stream at the exact point where the baby was coming that was when she was bathing and the Bible says she had the sound of a child. She would have said, go and kill him. When she saw it, she started laughing. Her father gives an instruction to kill people. The daughter is saving the major person who they were supposed to kill. Destiny help us. Look at the drama that happens in the spirit. Your father gives an instruction. It was really Moses they were looking for. But now, Moses was in the house and they were killing other people. That was the deliverer. The mother... A Hebrew woman, she didn't have much. But do you know what happened? When they pushed Moses, the daughter got. And then the maid of the mother came and suggested. Say, do you want a nanny? They said, of course. He went and brought Moses' mother to come and be a nanny for her own son. And they paid her for it. Destiny help us. I want you to see that this is no coincidence at all. No threat. Moses grew up, he ate well, he was nourished. No joint this, no nonsense, because there was an assignment waiting for him. He was in perfect shape. Hallelujah. Have you been taking note of certain people? Many of us have been cheated because we have neglected these strange sets of people. We live in a generation where all we are looking for is men of God. Could it be that after the prophecy from the men of God, there are ordinary people? Some of you come for koinonia and you sit down close to the person who can suggest something to you that will change your life forever. Are you getting blessed? The Bible tells us that a man called Saul was persecuting Christians everywhere and having met with God with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus he said he should go to the house of who Judas and stay there who is that Judas we don't know he just said go and stay in his house destiny help us he stayed there three days and then they sent a man called Ananias we heard about him once didn't hear about him again and Ananias came and said, Brother Saul, Jesus whom you saw sent me, that I should lay my hands upon you, that you should be filled with the Holy Spirit and receive your sight. When that happened, he went away. The Bible says a certain time came, they met one prophet called Agabus. He came out from wherever we don't know. A man called Agabus. All his daughters were prophets. And he gave a prophecy. Hallelujah. You read all through the Bible and see several people. Ruth and Naomi haven't lost her husband, haven't lost everything. The Bible says that Ruth told Naomi, say, my God will be your God. and my, Your God will be my God, your people, my people. The Bible says while they stood, a man just came out from wherever called Boaz and he told the people we don't know who those people are he said as you glean leave some of the food their names were not mentioned just leave some food so that she can go and take care brothers and sisters if you miss the ministry of destiny helpers in your life listen to me you may never 
arrive your destiny no matter what kind of prophecy is given unto you there are many women who will not get married because the person who will connect them with their life partner is not there someone can just tell you come comes with us hallelujah let's go for fellowship somewhere pastor um let me stand up just go and stand there and god will orchestrate it in a way please sit down make yourself very comfortable hallelujah praise god now this lady sits down she has been praying for a life partner if you have not been praying about it you better start praying she has been praying oh god a godly man a man who loves and fears you and what happens we cannot even find a friend again who invited her and she sat down and while she sat down sam is worshiping now listen come sam sam gets up and sam is lifting his hands as we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name you deserve the glory what happens while sam is moving left and right doing the business of the father suddenly sam finds out that he's been drawn to this role sam will move this way and sam will be drawn and then a preacher like me will say talk to your neighbor and say it's your time to be blessed and Sam turns and says, your time to be blessed. And the Holy Ghost will say, did you hear what you said? Yeah. Hallelujah. A few years after they are happily married. And when you ask them, what happened? They say, someone. That's what they say. Someone. The someone may be in the congregation, but may not even know that he or she was the person who made this happen. Are you listening to me? destiny help us many people have missed out every time you are entering a prophetic season of breakthrough in your life make sure you begin to handle with utmost respect the people that begin to come around you because some of them may not even be Christians somebody can just come drunk with beer it may even be your loved one and for the first time, you will say something sensible in years. You say, ah, you didn't go for fellowship this night. Then you hiss and go back. And God will say, your address. As you are coming in, that's when God will step into your life in a mighty way. Hallelujah. Men who do not know these principles die as failures in life and wonder, oh God, why are you not changing my story? hallelujah this is very important i have seen this happen in my life when god showed me that this would be the venue how it was going to happen i knew listen the next time you are trusting god for a breakthrough in your life don't think he's just going to come by an angel flapping his wings and says take men men have been god's instrument of breakthrough Hallelujah. Are you receiving something tonight? Am I challenging you? And then we met Prof. And Prof just came and spoke to the church once. Once. And they came till today. Since we started in March 2011, we have not had to pay one naira for this auditorium to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ in this same Zaria destiny help us it's not a big thing for it's not a big deal for many of you until the day you get into positions where you will require the help of men are you listening to me many of us have pushed our destiny helpers away either because they do not carry forms that's the problem we have with people who segregate people we are not the rich ones. We are the ones who our fathers are senators. What is your father? Capital, leave this place. We are the ones who are intelligent. What's your CGP? 1.5. Get out of here. 
Hallelujah. We are the ones who are smart. We attended Queen's College. Which church did you, which, which school did you attend? One school, they have even forgotten the name. Leave this place. We are the ones who went abroad. We spent six years abroad. Where have you gone out from? I've just been in my local government. I've not even gone out. Leave this place. When you begin to treat people that way, get set for a rude shock in life because your destiny helpers will never assume forms that will attract you to them. You must have a discerning grace to look beyond them. Some of them may be visitors. Every time they come to your house, you know they are coming to collect your father's money. But maybe that day, maybe that day, that day, it could be some gatekeepers in your house. Every time you look at them, Adamu, Adamu, how I say, well done, man. how are you? You are insulting the man. One day you look and say, sorry. I saw one application. There's one newspaper here. You say, let me see. And you just find out that they need exactly what you want. And it will change your life and your story forever. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I was told the story of a lady who had been trusting God for breakthrough. Hallelujah. And the day they called her for a job interview, in all sincerity, she did not have any money. The mom did not have money there. And it was her neighbor who was a gate man. She begged him. It took a lot of humility for her to beg him. Guy said, give me my money. I said, make sure you give me. And I think he gave her, was it 500 or 200? She transported herself, got that job. When she got the job, they were going to lodge her in a five-star hotel for one month first, where they would take her. Are you listening to me? Gave her 0.8 million to be able to get a nice house. This is true life story. Hallelujah. All that lady, that lady bought a bike and came and gave the gate man. The gate man was resting. Little did he know his breakthrough was coming. She just gave him a bike. He left the work immediately. Immediately. Many of you in life, listen to me. This is a powerful message. Many of you in life have neglected certain people. You may stand and look at this brother and just say, Kai, I beg Jerry. Many of us relate with people only based on what we can get from them. You need to stop that demonic attitude. The day I don't need anything from you, you are not my friend again. The day necessity brings it, suddenly, ah, Pastor Femi, we need venue. You are his friend. If that is your attitude, you will miss out on many prophetic things. You can see someone, the person is wearing a shoe that is not very nice. Thank God for the 10,000 naira one your father bought for you. The person may not have what you have, but he has a, he knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that can open the door that your family has. Every prayer point has a human being as the answer somewhere. Every prayer point. Every prayer point. I tell you, if you are praying for a job, that job is available somewhere and it is at a platter of gold. One note can change a man's destiny. Activating breakthroughs through the ministry of destiny help us. Could this be why some of us are where we are today? Could it be that that's why some of our family members are where we are? The gentleman that always comes to your father and your father says, don't tell him that I'm around. Could it be that that very day he came with a news that will set the family forever and the person will live and go forever we are going to be praying hallelujah we are going to be crying for a restoration of destiny help us that we have allowed to slip through our hands we are going to be praying for sensitivity many of you treat everybody bad you treat people rude you are hostile you talk to people you say that's how I am because you feel you have your world met together. A day will come. You will find out that what you have. You don't have access to a king. And it is God that will connect you there. Hallelujah. Today by the grace of God. Many places where I go and minister. I don't know those who told them about me. They just said. We heard about you. Who were the people who popped. The Bible said it was noised abroad. That Jesus was in town. We do not know. I only will pray for those people in my secret place that God will bless and honor them. You may never know. Never know.
Sometimes we just get seeds from people coming into the ministry account. We don't even know the people. Could it be that one destiny helper shared his testimony one day? Are you listening to me? See, I am convinced that it does not cost God a fortune to cause a major prophetic breakthrough in your family. I was told about a man who had been saving to buy some cars, you know, just a, a, a little car. And then one day, when he was going to buy the car, God sent him to go and um, greet, you know, like their elder ones, like an uncle. So when he went to go and greet the uncle, he was sitting outside. These are true stories. He was sitting outside. And then a rich man came in to see the uncle. And then he told him, he said he should wash his car for him. And he started washing the car. Of course, he sounded insulting. But then that's a big man. He was washing the car. Then when he was washing the car, the uncle didn't see him. For hours, they were gisting. He washed the car, cleaned it, and sat down. He was even getting angry. When they came out, the uncle was hostile to him. He said, why have you come to see me? Don't you see that I have meetings? The, the rich man asked him, he said, what is it? He said, I just came to tell you that I gathered some small money. I want to buy a car. And then the rich man asked, just jokingly, he said, what car? He said, golf. The man laughed. He said, is that a car? He said, the next day, you should come and meet him in his office. I'm telling you, I lie not. He gave him a brand new Toyota the next day. See, let me tell you something. It's not everything that money can do. Learn this early enough. Because many people brag with the monies of their parents. My father is a senator. My mother is a this. There are many people who were healed in Koinonia here. We still do not know who brought them. Someone referred them on the road. Told them, do this, do that. And they came and they got healed. I made up my mind never to. That's why I treat people with love and honor and respect. You don't know who. It could be a little girl like this, my sister. She may just look at you and pray a prayer for you. And say, God just asked me to touch your head and just touch your head and say, bless you. Suddenly, you see every door opening and you are like, what in the world is going on? Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Sometimes God can lead you to a meeting. You don't know the name of the ministry. You don't know the name of the man of God. You don't know the name of anybody. You don't know the ushers that brought you. All you know is that one word was declared. You carry that word, you went back. Most times, you never get to see your destiny helpers to tell them thank you. There are only few times you get to meet them. Four things that define prophetic moments of breakthrough. Number one, the spirit of prayer. Grace to pray like never before. Number two, a heart to give suddenly there is a dissociation between you and whatever it is that you have number three demonic confrontations that attempt to discourage you number four they begin to come destiny help us they come as phone calls they come as friends they come as enemies they come as unprofitable situations they come as hostile different things hallelujah i'll never forget someone who had an issue with his supervisor final year student some years ago he had a very serious issue with the supervisor and the supervisor would not even look at him and somehow somehow people began to mediate another lecturer was mediating and when he finally got to call the guy in, they began to talk. After insulting him and shouting and doing every kind of thing, he said, where are you from? And that was where a conversation started. And they wouldn't end that conversation until after three hours. That guy found out that there were certain opportunities he desired, that that student had ways. He knew his father could help out and so on and so forth. It was actually a property the man, the lecturer wanted to sell. And then he got to find out that the boy's father was a real estate agent. They exchanged numbers there. And that man's life changed. Who have you been neglecting? God is asking you a question. Don't look at your neighbor. Who have you been neglecting? 
because they may not speak English like you because they may not they are not charismatic as you who have you been neglecting because they don't belong to your church or they don't come for koinonia or because they are not Pentecostals huh? because they are not filled with the Holy Ghost you know there's this rubbish association of religious things that go on we are the ones who pray we are the ones who fast we are the ones who, who we are the ones who know God God will always use the most unlikely means never forget this message could it be that your destiny helper is here in Koinonia sitting close to you hallelujah when my younger brother was very small he drank paint one day took a cup of paint and drank it and he fell down there and fainted created commotion and everybody was just running helter skelter they took him to the hospital but that was an opportunity because people came to greet hallelujah and there were certain people my father wanted to see who would not respond to him they came to greet my brother and finally some opportunities was trusting God for came by I'm teaching you wisdom tonight many of you will need to call your parents and tell them you stop insulting everybody that comes it doesn't matter what they have done God can still use them to be the ladder for you to step into destiny there are some of you here there are people that you can never look eyeball to eyeball with you swear and say till Jesus comes because of what you did to my mother because of what you did to my father they gave us one thirty thousand to share my my young my elder brother gave me 2k and when may god punish you for as long as i live calm down do you know that one day a door can be opened i pray every time and i tell god there are destiny partners that are attached destiny helpers attached to this ministry there are destiny helpers attached to my life there are destiny helpers attached to your life once again let me use this last example and we'll pray. Two people, one stand here, one stand here. Anybody? You, my brother? Just stand there. Never forget this. The distance between you and your breakthrough is not as far as you see. I don't care what it is. Hear me. The distance between you It could be a carryover cause you are praying and saying, Oh God, but they can wave this thing. And you have done everything you know to do. One day, God can just send someone and they'll be discussing about you in the office and they'll say, Please help this person. He has tried. The distance between you is a destiny helper. And I'm telling you, it can be seconds away, it can be minutes away. Only learn to recognize destiny helpers. They will come in forms that you will not appreciate them. After the grace year, there are people who come and just look. There are some people who just send me text messages. With one scripture. Jokingly, they did not even know. I don't know them, I don't have their numbers. But that one scripture just gives an insight to something God has been attempting to communicate to me destiny help us we are going to cry unto God are you ready to pray God bless you rise up on your feet say the distance between me say it as loud as you can the distance between me and my breakthrough is a helper away say the distance between my family and their breakthrough is a helper away Prayer point number one, you are going to cry unto God and say, Lord, I, I repent of people I have neglected. I, I want you to really pray and say, people I have kicked out of my life. Destiny helpers that would have taken me to a glorious level in my life by now. Lift your voice and pray. Kapo shatala kapanarara. Kamprata kotosia. People who would have given me relevant information. Those who would have connected me with helpers. Lift your voice and pray. 
some of our family members are struggling aimlessly because there are people who can help wine pressers bakers men who can take you to the king it's not as hard as it seems i am convinced it's a destiny help by way no matter what you need financial breakthrough a miracle a prophetic word direction in your life say lord i repent for neglecting destiny help us i've let them come and pass i refuse to activate defining moments in my life pray on behalf of your family <laughs> say lord for my father for my mother for my brothers they would have gotten jobs by now they would have built houses by now they would have gotten contracts by now doors would have opened that terminal disease would have left by now my family would have been together by now but for the neglect of destiny help us hallelujah prayer point number two and i want you to pray this with all your heart he said i will restore to you you're going to pray and say lord let that cycle come back again in my life let that cycle i missed as a result of carelessness or pride or arrogance or insensitivity lift your voice say lord let the helpers come again lord let financial helpers come lord let marital helpers come lift your voice and pray lord let academic helpers come the distance between you and your breakthrough is your wine presser is your wine baker it's not hard is there anything too hard for god to do i'm telling you in one day god can change your story in one day god can change the story of your family members restore pray restore for my family restore oh god opportunities that have been lost opportunities send them again oh god help us of destiny send them again reactivate breakthrough reactivate breakthrough hallelujah let me tell you a little story i have a friend listen to me i have a friend in abuja this guy went to abuja a poor broke person with nothing but his faith hallelujah and this guy had been praying and said lord change my story help me this guy was crying praying people told him and you said stupid boy you got up and came to abuja no house no car no nothing this guy was praying and one day it always happens one day you don't even know that's why you must be prepared he was just sitting down and a friend called him he said where are you he said come quick this guy just ran and he entered the room and he saw a big man and some people were talking and he said i wanted to involve you because god asked me to bless you ah. and he sat down and the rich man was going to buy a plot of buy some plots of land 720 million 720 million and 10 percent goes to the agents so they brought him this guy became a millionaire overnight he didn't do anything they just brought him and counted the number of people the 10 percent agency fee was what changed his life yet there are many tongue-talking estate agents who have been in Abuja since 1990 since 1999 praying and running with complimentary cards this guy was wearing palms he wasn't wearing a suit palms and his life changed overnight 
brothers and sisters if you ever forget anything this night remember that your prayer request is in the hands of a man it takes God who is the father of spirits to connect the lines and that's going to be our next prayer point you're going to say Lord by the instrument of the prophetic I call forth they that have been destined to take me to the next level to take my family make sure you are praying Lord, prophetically, pray. Those who will open doors of jobs, doors of marriages, doors of ministry, doors of anointings, doors of favor, doors of lifting, doors of success, doors of increase, doors of breakthrough. Make sure you are praying. Pray it with all your heart. Your family story can change. You have been praying and fasting. Could this be the message? Could this be the message? Pray. Say, Lord, whether in Lagos or Abuja or Kano or Zamfara, the United States, the Caribbean, by the prophetic power of the Spirit, let there be a connection, orchestrate a meeting. Let there be a meeting. Pray. Pray. God wants to take you from this level to another. It's a year of supernatural exploits. Exploits by the Spirit. Your story can change. Activate defining moments. Activate breakthrough in your life. Come on, prophesy. I call them. They are coming into my life from the north, the east, the south. I pray for E and I. Destiny help us are coming. We receive them. We receive them. We receive them. We receive them. Hallelujah. Let me give you one little story. Look at me. When Professor Madi was the Vice Chancellor of Amadou Bello University, many of you did not meet him. There was a gentleman who did very well, but he did not get admission. Hallelujah. And the guy just went, for reasons he could not explain, he went and sat down near the Senate in the night. And Professor Madi had the culture of walking into students' hostels, walking around just to see what is going on. And when he walked, he saw the gentleman and he called him. He said, why are you sitting down here? He said, sir, look at my WIAC result. Look at everything. But my catchment area is not there and they didn't give me admission. He said, you are such a brilliant boy. Do you know what he told him? He said, go home and pack your load and come back. When he came back, they had printed his, admi his admission letter. This is true. It's a confirmed story. Hallelujah. I know about a student who had been victimized for years till he was in 300 level. Whatever it is that happened, either his name or his matriculation number clashed. And what this guy was seeing was not his real CGPA. This guy would work so hard, but when the exams come out, he would not be it. And then one day, someone just came in and for whatever reason, the person decided to start cross-checking things. The next thing, they put on the notice board that they wanted to see him when they called him they said he should go and bring his results and his courses that he registered do you know true life story when they, this guy was uh, maybe around 1.7 something by the time they corrected everything he was supposed to be in 2-1 in all sincerity my cousin my cousin was a student in this school my cousin was a student in this school he wrote a major exam that he got A and when the result came out, they gave him F. This guy they didn't know. He knew that he had, he had read. But you see, sometimes, even when you have the evidence, you don't have access to the king. There are many of us that have evidences that would wipe our night time. But that access to the king. Hallelujah. 
And one day God raised a visiting prof who just came and he just complained and showed him everything. The man took on the case by himself until they rectified it. Look at me for a moment. What do you expect God to do in your life and in your family? It's in the hands of someone. It's in the hands of someone. That breakthrough is in the hands of someone. A house to complete for your loved ones to go to school. Let me tell you, no matter what it is, expand your mind tonight. There are men who are carriers of miracles. They don't even know. There are some of you that your loved ones need some jobs. They have been suffering. You know that they want to change where they are working or they don't even have a job. They are prayed. They are applying CV after CV. If it is destiny helpers, they will accelerate your path. You will jump protocols. We are going to pray. Say, Lord, I receive discernment to see these people when they come into my life. Lift up your voice and pray. It takes discernment. It takes discernment. It takes discernment. Say, Lord, let me discern. They may not be my tribe. They may not be my friends. They may be the enemies of our family. But Lord, grace to discern when you are about to use them to change our story. Hallelujah. Final prayer point. Now you're going to pray and speak over your life and tell yourself you are breaking through and breaking forth on the left and right. Don't keep quiet, please. Don't keep quiet. Prophesy. I break through from the left, the right, the east, the west. Oh, hallelujah. I activate breakthroughs. I establish it in the name of Jesus by the spirit of prayer. I contend against every power of darkness. Come on, pray. Pray against every satanic force. Pray against every power of darkness that wants to attempt to abort your breakthrough God wants you to smile God wants you to smile God wants you to smile He wants to encourage you He wants your life to be fruitful Satan get lost Be lifted all ye gates Let the family of Koinonia receive breakthroughs I prophesy breakthroughs Breakthroughs, breakthrough, financial breakthrough, marital breakthrough, family breakthrough, academic breakthrough, spiritual breakthrough, breakthrough in your job. Let your family members smile. I provoke it from the realm of the spirit. I provoke it from the heavens. I activate the angelic. I activate the angelic. Let angels begin to move to every family. Let angels begin to move over your academic. Angels move over your finances. Angels move over your family. Angels move. I activate the operation of angels. Content with the powers in the heavens and release breakthroughs for God's people. Let the angelic contend with the powers that delay, that stop people from entering their prophetic breakthrough. I release breakthroughs. I release breakthroughs. I release breakthrough. I speak it in your life. I send an anointing into your life. A breaker anointing, a breakthrough anointing. I send it into your life. I send it into your academics. I send it into your family. I send it into your finances. Those you do not know, I cause them to arise and help you. 
I cause them to arise and help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. Everywhere your gift is needed, I command them to begin to talk about you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I activate breakthrough for you. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere your gift is needed, whoever needs your gift in Nigeria, I stand as a servant of God. I command a connection in the realm of the spirit beginning from tonight, 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 in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for every one of your family members looking for a job. My God and my King tonight. Let testimonies rise from this message. No matter how long, tonight, let someone talk to somebody, talk to somebody and talk to somebody and connect them for breakthrough in the name of Jesus. For your family members, I command, help us, those who will connect them to projects, and contracts and opportunities yes they don't merit it but by the power of destiny help us i connect them to the breakthrough for the next level in the name of jesus where you have cried academically i connect you to help us professors who will help you admin staffs who will help you admin staff who will help you members in the senate who will help you whether for accommodation whether for your result whether for missing script whether for your wayek whatever it is in the name of jesus as the senate and the faculty board members meet over your results and your performance may a strange man enter that meeting and advocate for you in the name of jesus anywhere they want to turn down your family members or turn down anything let a strange man come we don't want to know the name let a strange call come let a strange connection come i prophesy it i release it to you in the name of jesus i release testimonies 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 from this breakthrough experience beginning from tonight i command calls from destiny help us calls from destiny help us calls from destiny help us connections with destiny help us they will travel and come and meet you you will meet them on the street they will come to your homes in the name of jesus you will see them in your dreams god will connect you for every one of your family members that is supposed to be married and they are not married the husbands or the wives they are not in space they are here on earth lord we pray tonight as a family by the power that is in the name of the resurrected christ i pray let help us lead partners to their mates in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus we command supernatural marital connections in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus we bind every devil we bind every power that attempts to cause delay we set them free from every curse and every yoke of bondage be released in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. the ministry of destiny help us all through this week I want you to pray cry out and say Lord bring them I believe you will hear fearful testimonies in this place as a result tonight I've shown you a very mighty secret don't forget it too soon hold it every time you are praying over something the answer is in the hands of another person stop beating about the bush every man and every authority can answer when God calls. 
Yours is just to pray that God will connect you. Hallelujah. You're here, you're not born again. Now is the time for you to have an experience with the Lord Jesus. Or you've given your heart to Jesus. This is the greatest of all breakthroughs. That you start a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And tonight, let this be that night where you will begin a new walk with the Lord. I want to give you an opportunity. Everybody keep standing. You're here and you've not given your heart to the Lord. Or you've given your heart to the Lord once but you found yourself derailing in the path of destiny. I'd like you to leave your seat and come out quickly. I want to pray with you. Is there any kind of person like that? Hallelujah. Please don't be afraid. You need to come out, leave your seat and come. Appreciate them. Someone is coming. Appreciate them. Don't remain in your seat. Appreciate them. Another brother is coming. They are coming. Appreciate them. This is the beginning of breakthroughs. Keep coming. Keep coming. Jesus is calling. Enough is enough. Keep appreciating them. They are coming. Thank you for coming. Lord, we celebrate you. Keep coming, brother. God bless you. God bless you. I see you, sister. God bless you. God bless you. God bless as many of you who are coming. It's the beginning of a new journey. It's the beginning of a new journey. No devil will hold you. No devil will keep you. My sister, God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. This is why God brought you tonight. Keep coming. The Lord bless you. No matter what the challenge is, keep coming. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. The greatest way to activate breakthroughs in your life and to secure a life both in this realm and in the life to come is to give Jesus your heart. No one condemns you. But tonight we want you to start a real journey. I believe that the Holy Spirit brought you out by himself. And I salute you for the courage. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and pray after me, everyone standing. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you tonight, unable to help myself. I believe that Jesus is Lord over my life. I confess my sins and I declare that Jesus is Lord. I receive eternal life into my spirit. From today, I'm born again forward ever backward never holy spirit come and live in me make me a great tool in the hands of the lord in the name of the lord jesus now let me pray for you father preserve these ones you brought them out by your spirit preserve them i pray that their salvation will last it will be genuine and lord that they'll begin to grow from grace to grace in the name of the lord jesus christ I curse every devil of darkness that will want you to move back into whatever you were doing before you came to the Lord. Let this be a new beginning for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for coming. I want you to follow the ushers quickly. They will have your details. And tomorrow you will be meeting with Pastor Jakes by 7 p.m. Oh, that will not be possible. Monday on Monday, Monday 7 p.m. We'll remind you. Monday 7 p.m. you will meet at chapel. And will follow you. Please appreciate them. Appreciate them. Thank you, sister. Thank you, brother. Appreciate them. Thank you so much for coming. Very quickly, you're worshiping with us for the first time. I'd like you to leave your seat and run out here quickly. We have a blessing and a prophecy for you. If you're worshiping with us, appreciate them. They are coming. Come on, run like you know your destiny is opening up in a new and glorious way. God bless you. Thank you for coming. You'll never be the same. I assure you, God brought you here. Jesus is in this place. Appreciate them. Can you celebrate what God is doing? Thank you. Thank you, sisters. Thank you. You'll never be the same. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is Koinonia. Meeting put together by Eternity Network International. How many of you were blessed tonight? You'll never be the same again. In the name of Jesus. Saints of God, stretch your hands as you prophesy breakthrough. Lord, as a token, give them major breakthroughs in their lives. Let them know that God is at work in this place. In the name of Jesus, we bless you with a fresh hunger for God. We bless you with a fresh hunger. Beyond the breakthroughs that you will receive, a fresh hunger for the things of the Spirit. A fresh hunger for the presence of the Lord. Whatever challenge you came here with is swallowed up tonight. In the name of Jesus, go and experience unlimited breakthroughs by the hands of Jesus Christ. 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you once. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.